The Fisherman's Mission was established in 1881 and is the main maritime charity which looks after fishermen and their families around the coast of the UK. We have centres all around the coast. We're here today in Troon in Scotland, which is a centre that was recently refurbished with a grant that came from Seafarers UK and other maritime charities to help develop our work. Based in Troon at the moment, we have about roughly 20 boats, 19 to 20 boats that are coming, that regularly are tied up at Troon. They fish year round and it's prawns that we have. The main reason for us opening up at the beginning was over a Christmas when we realised that there were men here living on the boats and they had absolutely nowhere to go. The facilities in the boats are very basic and we realised we had about 12 men just hanging about the harbour um, right over the Christmas holidays. So the centre was born from that. Quite simply, fishing is not your normal, typical job. It is a community of people. It has been often called a family, and that family is different from most other shore-based roles and occupations. I wasn't going to go to the fishing. I went to, when we went Saturday morning, I came up from the harbour and I said to my mum, oh, my dad's had a good week this week. He had a new set of oil skins, Southwester, and sea boots. I said, that's for you. You start the scene Monday morning. And that was it. I just, I've been there all, for 46 years. So. Been fishing all my life, left school after doing my exams, went straight to the fishing aboard my father and my uncle's boat. Um, it was the only job I ever wanted to do. It's not a job for everybody. It's, you need a bit of grit and determination. I think my father took me to the sea when I was about six or seven year old for the first time one night and got hooked. That's the only way you can describe it. I absolutely loved the job. Full time fishing for more than 35 years. Um, more than 20 of them as a fishing skipper. Uh, as I say, I started off taking the family boat to sea when I was about 19 and I progressed and I eventually bought my own boat. And all the all the, the members of the crew that I started with we were all related. It was like a family concern. I met my husband Donald in 1964. But anyway, Donald's heart was in the sea. So Donald's dad said, right, go down to the shop at the harbour at Junior and get your sea boots and oil skins. It takes a lot to be a fisherman, it does. It's something that um, if you, you're born and bred into it, it's, it's part of your life. Years ago, to me, it had to be in your blood. You know, if it wasn't, and you wouldn't get him to go into fishing. The men, although they were good friends, cousins, there were still a lot of um, rivalry in the fishing to see who had the best week. But if anything went wrong, they were running to help each other. There wouldn't have been any hesitation. I mean, and we're all just like brothers together. You know, if anything was to happen, the first thing you would go and help them. And you would do that with any of the boats. And you know, everybody had a difficult life because uh, if the men didn't catch very much, it reflected in the wages at the end of the week. You've got to remember you're, you're out here to do a job and to provide for a family. It's not just one family, it's four families that on here I'm providing for. I'm trying to provide for four families. Uh, it's not always plain sailing, it's not always happy, but you've got to grin and bear it. The money at times does worry you. It was in, I think it's in your blood and you don't think of that as you'd be doing something else. You just take it, well, this is, this is a bad spell, but it can only get better. Well, we always said that. It can't be any worse. Sometimes it did. I remember one Sunday, a man phoned my husband, Donald, to say that the boat had been sunk in Air Harbour um, in a big cargo ship. I can't remember how many hundred feet long and he had tried to turn it near harbour and didn't make it and went right into the side of the Spesbona and she was almost split in two. So they had no boat for about six months and we had no income 
We just had to do the best we could. The only thing I can say to you, I've been over the, over the side in the sea three times. And that was uh, one of the times uh, we were talking about Norwest when that when there was some fish about. So that morning we just loosened the rope and they were all ready to be slipped away from the winch. And the boat in a row. The next thing I knew I was over the side. And all I could look up, I could see the lights of the boat up through the water. And this rope, I got hold of the rope and the boat came back down again, it struck me in the head. And it came back up and all I felt was a hand in each shoulder like that. I lifted him in the boat, it was my brother and one of the crew. And they couldn't see my face for blood. I had an incident last year actually that I got caught up in one of the nets and dragged over the side. I was very lucky the crew that I had at the time were very switched on, were very clued up and no last, no, I, I didn't lose any limbs or any lasting damage but it can be scary. It can just bring everything into reality that you're not invincible. Some people have lost limbs, some people have lost lives, but there's still men willing to go to the job and take that risk. Getting crew willing to work nowadays is becoming a challenge, and that's where uh, a lot of the boats have went for foreign crew. Well, it's changed quite considerably now, because there are quite a lot of the boats now have got Philippines in them. And if it wasn't for them, I think half the fleet would be, would be gone because there nobody seems to want to go to the fishing route. I'm JP Ruby, um, 20, 29 years old, and I work in Ocean Hunter. I'm from the Philippines. And we work uh, all day and every Monday to Friday. And we fish in fronts, we get and landed and make some money. I will choose my to to fish to to be a fisherman because there's no I think it's hard from the Philippines to get to get a work. That's the reason they're here is to make money to send home to their families. And if I can if I can do that, then that, it's an achievement that I can help families in another country. I couldn't do it being away from your family for. 10 months of the year. Donald always said he would never have changed his lifestyle. He loved the fishing, regardless of all the traumas that he had gone through. He loved that life, he loved it. I think it's getting harder and harder all the time, the fishing. But nowadays, I think, well, we need a lot of qualifications now. And they're even up at the mission now, they're teaching them how to mend nets, splice ropes. We realised that our new way of going forward was almost going back to where we began, of going out and engaging with fishermen and their families. So we've modernised, and the True Mini Centre is a prime example of that, where we've gone from having big buildings with accommodation and provision of catering facilities to having a small bespoke centre that meets the needs of what fishermen and their families are looking for. We have about four to 500 people coming in over a month. The mission is very much based on what they could talk about um, it's Christianity with the sleeves rolled up. It's not, we're not there to change, to convert people or to you know, do that. We're there to support and to get on with it, to actually practically help where, where we can. I think it's a good thing for the fishermen's mission up there because it's like a home at night if they're coming in to help. It's a kind of family place. The Troon Fisherman's Mission has been such a blessing for the fishing boats in Troon. You know, there was nothing there, it was just a dismal place. But now Karen and Paula have got the mission sorted out. It's a lifeline for them. And you know, you wonder what would these men have done if it hadn't been there? A lot of people don't know how lucky we are to have the, the centre there. The boys can jump off the boat for an hour or two at night and sit down, watch a bit of telly in peace and quiet without an engine running, without the gulls squawking. And it is open 24 hours. The, the whole facilities are there for anybody, seven days a week. 
as I said, when everything's running fine and their big catch is going in, it's great. But when something happens, whether it be that it's helping the foreign boys out, maybe with bank accounts or some visa paperwork, or if it comes to there's maybe been a fatality, an injury aboard the boat, the mission superintendents are there, and it's not until you know you, they're there, when you know you need them, that you, rec you, you recognise the, the work that they do. I think it's very important because fishermen's uh, mission, it's, it's like your home. And the working men who are here, whether it be Filipino, UK, Scottish, whatever, Irish, they're all in here and they're all treated the same way. And the work they do is invaluable. We work with fishermen who are active, who've maybe fallen on rough times or having family or financial problems. We work with retired fishermen, widows, families, um, anyone really that's been related to the fishing industry. Between Karen and I at the Troon Centre, in terms of active beneficiaries or families we're working with, we have in between 160, 180 cases that we're really keeping an eye on and it's seeing probably at least on a monthly basis. We become a group that fishermen and their families can come to, can seek support, can seek assistance, but we can only do that with the support of individual donors, corporates and grant giving trusts as well. Seafarers UK are an essential partner in delivering this work and they have been for a number of years. They provide annual grants which help us deliver our work in centres across the UK and ensure that with confidence, when fishermen have problems, we have the capability to give a resource and time to those fishermen, their families and their children. Fishing's a dangerous game. It's the most dangerous peacetime occupation that's going. It's our job, not in lie, we go out, we rescue the guys, bring them ashore, and that's when the fishermen's mission come into their own. Uh, they look after the welfare, can they help the guys? They might be miles away from home, they might need counselling, and the fishermen's mission spend a lot of time and effort making sure that they do their job, uh, and a great job they do as well. Without donations, would we have a fisherman's mission? We, we have charities for cancer research and all the other kinds, but to actually have a charity to assist fishermen or fishing families in times of need is a big bonus for the British industry.